Uh, let me start by giving a little bit of introduction of uh, systemizer technique. Okay. 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 So systemizer has been in the IT industry uh, for the past 13 years, uh, ever since 2007. Uh, currently, our HQ are located in SF15 Courtyard, Subang Jaya. Uh, and we are currently supporting all our customers throughout each state within Peninsula Malaysia and also East Malaysia. All right. And as a company, uh, our vision is to always bring the future technology that would improve on how the current world works. Uh, and with our vision, we carry a mission to provide the best sustainable solution and services that help to modernize business for, for our, all our customers. Okay, uh, so here we are. Uh, these are the top things for systemizer technique. So a bit brief uh, on our journey, uh, I would like to share that uh, systemizer started back in 2008, where we are the serving IT needs for the YTY industry. And then after two years, uh, we expanded our business where we started to support other external client. So in 2012, we actually became a subsidiary of Sete Barat, where, where in the same year, we actually started to expand in the field of virtualization and backup solution. So here's the interesting part. In 2014, we hold two record-breaking titles. So one of it is that we successfully deployed the longest state library deployment in Asia Pac. And the second is that we managed to deploy up to 1,000 nodes of IBM HPC for our enterprise customer. And then for following that, uh, after the success, we actually, uh, the following years, we started to embark more and more enterprise clients such as uh, Bank Negara, BMW, MRT Corp. And as our vision and mission stated, uh, in 2018, we started to provide hybrid cloud solution and network security solutioning to all our customers. All right. Okay, so maybe uh, can I share a bit uh, about what kind of cloud solution that we actually uh, provide? So, well, uh, if you can see here, uh, it can be divided into these three categories. As for the public cloud, I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with such uh, as AWS, Azure, and Alibaba and so on. But, uh, and then as for private cloud, it is similar to public cloud concept. It's just that you, you have the infra and all your data sits on your own premise, okay? And then uh, you have the best of both world, which is the hybrid cloud, okay? So it's a combination of public and private where you will benefit the most from this uh, both solutions, okay? All right, then we go to the uh, products and services that we have, okay? So as for the rest of the product that we carry, uh, I'll share with you the brands that we are partnered with uh, in providing the best technology to our customer. So we do carry server, storage, and network from all the major brands in the market, as you can see here. So uh, as part of our partnership with this principle, uh, we are fully trained and certified to provide the extended services on this, uh, all these brands, okay? And, oh, uh, did I mention to you, uh, we are actually one of the few partners in Malaysia who still have the expertise to support Unix-based machine, such as uh, HP UX, uh, IBM Power, and Oracle machine. Okay, let's move on. Okay, as you can see uh, here in the screen, uh, we also provide under enterprise storage and backup solution. Uh, these are the brands uh, that we carry over the years until today. Uh, as for the virtualization, we are quite strong in the deployment experience for all these five hypervisors stated here. Okay, let's move out. All right, apart from all the 
uh, infra solutions that you see just now, uh, we also started to offer our enterprise business management solution, which we partner with uh, BIMSA, okay, to carry their solutions. So, okay, those are the products that we carry. So here I'll share a bit about uh, on the services that uh, our company can provide. Okay. So here, as you can see, uh, we can help you to do the deployment services, manage and support data center, as well as providing the maintenance extended services. Okay, for all your uh, infra, IT infra. Okay. As for our core services, uh, these are our core services that we provide. Uh, ever, ever since we start back in 2007, uh, we provide, technically we provide end-to-end -end services that started from consultation all the way to deployment and then follow up by providing the after seal support. Okay. Moving on to our enterprise business management solution. Uh, okay, so this is a single reason why we actually brought the principal to you today uh, to share uh, on the capabilities for these solutions uh, in order to perform, uh, to offer how we can modernize the business is done today. All right, so they have four pillars of solution comprising of EBA, BIM, QDMS, and assemble. Uh, I'm pretty sure Kevin from Vimsa will explain more in depth later on this. Okay. So here is our reference. Uh, these are the uh, some of our client that has trusted us to take care of their IT needs uh, over the years, right? From our start until now. Okay. So this is from the enterprise. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have. Uh, MRT Corp, we have Bank Islam, uh, we have Takafuli class, we are supporting RHB, uh, even BMW as well. Okay. Uh, and then this would be from the government link. Okay. Uh, we have PPJ under our care, Sabah Port, uh, Bank Negara, and also LHDN. So now, the reason behind the trust that actually uh, why the client gave us to take care uh, of them is that because we hold on on this six core value okay so first of all um, all our projects that we ensure that there is no failure okay and uh, all our engineers and consultant are fully certified okay and we try to be very understanding on all our clients need and expectation okay and that this is a very important one we don't compromise on a very great service in terms of our all our deployment services and throughout the years uh with 13 years of experience uh we know and uh, we base on that for our best practices to advise our customer All right, uh, so I will not take more of your time. Um, I'll pass the floor to Mr. Kevin, uh, which is the managing director for the BIMSA itself. Uh, by the way, if you have any further question, uh, do take note that there will be a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Navi. Thank you, much appreciated. All right. Thank you. Thank you for inviting and thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Kevin Devejoglu. I am with uh, Beamstreet International. Um, and today I'm with uh, my colleague Sam Watt uh, from our software engineering team. Uh, today together we'll be talking about digital transformation and especially uh, we designed these webinars to be a series of webinars and this is gonna be the first uh, first one of the series so we are we are very excited and we are of course looking forward to seeing you more and more uh, of, often with these webinars so uh, what we did 
uh, was actually we put together a set of slides and we'll be talking about digital transformation and we'll be also uh, giving you some examples some use cases and and we'll talk in detail and that's just like Navi mentioned we also have a Q&A session at the end uh, we are very excited with our with our partnership with Systemizer and uh, we are very committed to uh, Malaysian market and with our strong partnership, we believe that uh, we give great services and we'll help companies uh, adopt digital transformation more and more in Malaysia. We are very committed for that. So uh, let's talk about our company a little bit, Beamster International, who we are and what we do. And then I'll uh, address uh, fundamentals of digital transformation. Uh, and we'll move on with some other uh, examples and use cases uh, with you. So as uh, Beam3 International, we are an enterprise software maker since 1998. We are based in New York. As a company, we uh, believe in uh, simplicity and we, we help companies adopt digital transformation. That is, that is what we do. And we, uh, our vision is to be the leader in enterprise global marketplace. That's our vision. And that's where we are going. As a company, we are pretty active in various business communities. Uh, and these are some of them. We have actually more uh, organizations that we follow. So uh, we work very close with uh, various uh, business communities, manufacturing, retail, finance, service, um, oil and gas, and other industries that we, we are very close with. Also, we are close to a manufacturing community, so we know what in general manufacturers are actually um, challenging, what kind of challenges they have, what kind of difficulties they have, and uh, and we learn from them actually uh, uh, very often uh, with, with these kind of organizations. Also, I need to mention that we have an internship program. In this internship program, we have university students learn about how to do pre-sales and pre-sales software engineering. It happened to be very popular among university students in uh, especially New York area. And uh, we are happy to continue this program continuously. All right, so let's talk about our company a little bit further. Uh, Beamster International and Beamster is actually a group of companies. Uh, we have presence in Europe as well as in Istanbul, as well as in, in Netherlands. As Beamster International, we are, we are based in New York. So as a group, we are about 200 people. We are a growing organization. Beamster is a very exciting group. And since uh, we are growing very fast and successfully uh, started in 2018, European Bank for Reconstruction and Development became one of our investors. So with their help and support, we have more visibility in international markets. And also, of course, we have more resources to invest in our products, uh, support our partners and support our customers. So that's a, that's a great advantage that we have right there. Our company is ISO 9001 certified and ISO 271 certified. That means we have certain policies and procedures in place and we are ready to and we are equipped to deliver good quality, high quality products and services every single time because we have, we have policies and procedures in place and we follow them on a daily basis. Uh, as BIMSER, we are a SAP certified vendor. We are a certified Microsoft vendor. We are also a certified vendor of uh, Acumetica. And also, we are a certified vendor of Myobi in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and I'll give you more information about how we are working with other uh, ecosystems and with our products as well. In addition to these uh, ecosystems, we are also very active in Sage uh, as well as Oracle uh, ERP ecosystems. So since 1998, we have been very focused. That's one of the reasons that we are a successful company. We focus on these four products. We call them strong four. So we have EBA, we have B, QDMS, and Ensemble. These are our core products, and that's what we focus on basically since 1998. Uh, EBA is our enterprise level business process automation, records management, document management, capture, and dashboard management platform. Beam is our asset, enterprise level, asset, maintenance, facility, energy, and field service management software. QDMS is a quality, risk, audit, and compliance management software. And finally, we have Ensemble as a business process management tool. So with the help of Beam, any company can manage uh, 
their assets, basically. Uh, when I say assets, that may be machinery, equipment, buildings, cars, trucks, fleets, uh, any asset that any company has, you can manage your, the life cycle of your assets, you can manage the uh, maintenance operations of your assets, and you can basically, at the end, extend the life cycle, extend the life uh, lifetime uh, of your assets. Uh, QDMS is to help companies comply with various quality and compliance management systems in a digital environment. And in bottom, you'll see two, two applications, two solutions. Since EBA is an electronic business automation platform, we have, we have developed these two applications, contract management solution and uh, EBA ITSM solution. With the help of contract management, you can manage your contracts digitally with no need of paper. And with the help of ITSM solution, for IT departments, you can manage your uh, incidents, requests, change, management uh, activities as well as you can uh, benefit from ITSM as a help desk basically that's that's what it is for in the next slide you can see how we position our products ensemble is a managerial tool with process management as well as performance management capabilities eba is a is an uh, is a workflow engine and resource management uh, platform beam as an asset and maintenance management system qdms as quality management system they are designed to automate processes. Our products are designed to run standalone. So I need no other system to run my, pro, my, run, my uh, run my software products. They can run standalone, basically. However, depends on the project. When there is a need, uh, we can integrate our products to each other. We can link to any ERP system, any CRM system, or any other enterprise level system available at customer's location. The idea is to provide customer integrated management system. That is what it is for. Our products are ready to run on cloud, they work on premise servers. We have up-to-date technology, latest APIs, latest technology, state of the art, because we invest a lot in our products and we develop them regularly. So they can integrate with any modern, any modern system easily. Uh, also, I need to mention that we have mobile apps available for all of our products. So any of our customers basically uh, can use our products with any, uh, any smart device, could be a tablet, could be a smartphone, and so on. These figures show since 1998, by the end of last year, how many projects we have we have delivered. It also shows more or less how many customers we have actually. So when you look at these numbers, uh, the highest number that uh, has is, is QDMS. We have more than 1,000 corporate customers using QDMS globally. And in addition, we have more than 1 million users using QDMS on a daily basis. We have EBA as our electronic business automation platform. It has a workflow engine, document management, and resource management capability, capabilities. Uh, we have deployed it more than 500 times. And right now, there are more, th more than uh, 50,000 business processes running on EBA. So there are many, there's, there are thousands of processes running on, on EBA on a daily basis. Uh, Beam our enterprise asset and maintenance management system. Uh, we have more than 400 customers. And right now, our customers are managing more than 15 million assets. These assets may be, may be machinery, equipment, buildings, property, and so on. So more than 15 million assets are, are being managed on our, on our systems. Um, our products are enterprise level. They are very, very scalable. I mean, we have customers with um, 8,000 users, 10,000 users. We have customers with also, of course, 100 users, 30 users, 20 users. So our products are scalable, meaning they can scale up if you are growing, and they can scale down if you're not growing. That's perfectly fine. So you can use our systems either way. They are, uh, they are ready to be used. They are state-of-the-art, user-friendly, and it ha they have very, very modern technologies available in them. So since we are coming from enterprise market, we have a lot of reputable customers uh, in our reference list. Uh, we are working with 3M in 17 different countries. We are working with AstraZeneca Baxter in pharmaceutical industry. We are working with Bridgestone uh, in tire industry, in automotive, automotive industry. Uh, speaking of automotive, we are also working with uh, Ford, Hyundai as some of our customers. Uh, we are working with uh, Henkel, we are working with uh, DHL. Also, we are working with Hugo Boss, uh, as you know, Germany-based uh, fashion company. Uh, we are working with Nissan, Renault, Alliance. We are working with International Paper, Unilever, United Nations, some of our customers. 
as you see, we have a pretty nice mix. Uh, I also need to mention uh, we also have uh, Starbucks as one of our references. As you see, we have been working with uh, enterprise level companies, very reputable companies that we are very, very proud of. Uh, it also shows that um, shows that many companies, global companies, actually put their trust in Beamster International, and we are we are very very proud of it. We are also very active in pharma, uh, medical device, and healthcare industry. We have these are additional uh, references that I like. I want to I want to share with you. So uh, these are heavily regulated industries. Our products are uh, actually compatible with many different uh, quality management and regulatory standards. Therefore, uh, we have been able to work with many different companies in healthcare, pharma, as well as medical device uh, verticals. So that's also one of our one of our advantages. Uh, I also need to mention, and I'll go a couple of slides back because I uh, I had to mention this earlier. So uh, our unique position is we are the only company in the products independent from each other, independent from any ERP system, any enterprise system, but can work with any ERP and any enterprise system. Basically, that is our unique position. So. This is a unique position that we have globally. I mean, uh, I had to mention it uh, to you. That's why actually I have to uh, move back a little bit. Talk about our, our unique position. So let's uh, let's move on. We talk about our references and we talk about our company. We talk about also coming from our mission, our vision, uh, our products, and our references that we talk about. Also, I, I just address our 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 unique global position in the world, offering those four products. Uh, uniquely and independent from each other, and we can work with any ERP or any other enterprise level system available in the marketplace. That's our unique position. So uh, these four products that I mentioned uh, to you, our actual position is to help companies adapt digital transformation, and our products are actually vessels, vessels to help companies adapt digital transformation. However, before jumping into the products and jumping into what actually what type of benefits actually they offer? I like to talk about digital transformation, digital transformation a little bit, because there are different um, uh, definitions, different approaches to digital transformation. Our approach is unique, and we try to be as practical as possible. And I like to share my views, our company's views, how we are actually approaching digital transformation with you. So that's why we call it uh, the Internet International Approach to Digital Transformation. So, what is digital transformation? There are many different uh, definitions in the marketplace. You can see it in different articles, you can see it in different books, and different writings. So, we like to keep it as simple as possible. And one of the simplest and uh, most sensible definitions that we have found is in actually in Harvard Business Review, published last year in August. And that is basically the digital transformation's true value, true, true definition. So, that is basically Digital transformation is adapting organization strategy and structure to capture opportunities enabled by technology. So, as as company owners, as business professionals, what we like to do and what we need to do is basically to uh, opportunities capture opportunities by utilizing technology. That is just what it is. That's just what digital transformation is in in core. The, it has many different benefits. I mean, with the help of digital transformation, we can be more competitive. We can reduce our cost. We can actually be more productive. We can be more efficient. Also, we can increase increase our customer satisfaction. We can actually also push continuous improvement with the help of digital transformation. We can increase our sales. Uh, we can also increase our, our market share. And also, we can be compliant to many different quality management and regulatory standards. These are some of the benefits. But this is very critical piece in my in my presentation because we actually it actually lays the foundation of our entire presentation. So let's keep this uh, definition uh, in mind. Basically, we like to capture the opportunities enabled by the technology, and we like to adapt our st company's strategy and structure to this change in digital environment. That's what we like to do, and that's what we strive for. Uh, moving forward, uh, we need to also uh, ask some questions like, how, how we came to this point in terms of digital transformation? What is the timeline uh, when we look back uh, as, as professionals, as business owners? 
uh, and also what is expected to happen next in terms of digital transformation. Let's talk about what is coming next, being uh, in, uh, looking ahead in a way. And also, uh, since right now all the businesses in the world are now affected by COVID-19, so how the business life will be after COVID-19. So our take is this, with this current, current crisis, so things will change. Nothing is going to be the same, right? So that is going to be the life before COVID-19 and life after COVID-19. And let's talk about how it's going to be and how we can actually address them as, as business professionals and how actually as being through international, we help companies uh, adopt those changes, what is coming next in the, in the scope of digital transformation. So when we look at this, where the digital transformation is coming from, actually, we need to look at the, the, the industry from industry 1.0 to 4.0. Actually, it really shows step by step how we are actually going towards digital transformation. I mean, one thing that I was missing here is the agri, agri, uh, agricultural, uh, agriculture years, agriculture age that uh, we all experienced in the past. Uh, when we were all farmers, when we were working in farms, and uh, most of the people, many people working, living in, in farms, out of cities, and that was totally different lifestyle for all of us. And then with the help of, uh, uh, with the help of industrial level revolution, things started to change. People started to move to cities, from suburbs, from farms to cities for jobs, to work in factories, to uh, get a job, and to basically Help our help help their families have a better life. So it all started with the industry 1.0, with the steam power as well as mechanization. That that is the first step, and then there goes the mass production, and then assembly line. Basically, you know, you line up, for example, making up. Let's say uh, you are making uh, a model uh, model T, the Ford's uh, one of those legendary cars, for example, in the assembly line, and that is what it is actually in terms of industry 2.0. That is the next step. And then there goes automatic automation and also computers. That's the that's the industry 3.0. And we are talking about 1970s. We, we are talking about IBM's you know first first machinery. You know like the, those large computers that they actually built. Right now we have them on our laps, right, or in our actual palms if we think about it. So this is that's the, uh, industry 3.0. Now where we are is actually industry 4.0. Now not only we have automation, not only we have computers. On top of it, we have IoT, Internet of Things. Now everything is linked to each other in industrial world. And there is, of course, there is networks. And even though we are not somewhere physically, we can do many different tasks, many different activities. Right now, think about it right now. Many of us working from home, and right now we are connected to the world. We, I can talk to you from New York, you're in Malaysia. Uh, and then we can you know, communicate, we can exchange information. And life goes on thanks to these technologies. That's uh, Right now, that's where we are in terms of in terms of industry 4.0 and, and digital transformation. So this slide basically shows, you know, from agriculture years to industry 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 in from 1970s to now in in this uh, in the age of uh, digital transformation. So what is expected next in terms of digital transformation? So this is where we are coming from from uh, industry from um, um, industry revolution to today for digital transformation. And right now, uh, when we look at what is expected next is one of the actual research that I'd like to share with you is Gartner. Six, based on their uh, survey, 67% of CEOs and CFOs believe that their actually way of doing their business, as in their business models, will be changing due to digital transformation. Okay, so things will be changing. That is what is coming, basically, based on this, this survey. On top of it, the demographic, demographics of the workforce will be changing in the next five years, meaning we will, as business owners, as business professionals, will be in the market looking for uh, employees with different skill set, highly, uh, highly trained, highly technologically um, uh, able to do many different activities. That is what is coming, basically. That's what is expected in, uh, as, a, as a next step. However, one thing changed this actually. This, this conversation, I was having this conversation last month, okay, uh, you know, early March uh, and late February. However, things change starting uh, actually in March. Why? Because we actually hit COVID 19. So, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, 
So there is going to be business life before COVID-19, and there is going to be business life after COVID-19. So just to you know address that, I put a picture of uh, Times Square in New York, right? So you can see on the right how it was in October, how crowded it is, how live it is. Now you look at uh, Times Square on the left, for example, now no one is outside. Things change. So how it's going to be the life after COVID-19, that's what we like to know. And that's what we need to actually prepare ourselves as business professionals, as, as business visionaries. That's what we need to think about. So nothing will be the same, that is for sure. But what is going to change? Let's think about it for a second in the scope of digital transformation. First of all, after COVID-19, and it's going to be maybe the new normal, okay, and maybe more many businesses had to do it in the first place, is the risk management. It's going to be more and more important than before. Think about it. What if all the companies actually were doing risk assessment in terms of pandemic or disease that may actually show up anytime in the, you know, in our lives? And what if they prepare some contingency plans? What if they were prepared? What if we all were prepared? How would be how actually the world would, would be so different right now if you think about it? So in coming days, right after this COVID-19 crisis is over, the companies has to be doing more and more risk management, risk assessment basically. This risk management, this risk assessment uh, studies has to be about processes, business processes that we have, about environment, you know, what may happen. What if a hurricane happens? What if a typhoon happens? Uh, what if flooding happens, right? So these things are all possibilities that we may face. Uh, health and safety risk management is going to be another important piece. So follow up to this, there is going to be also another risk management called pandemic and disc disease risk management. So today we have COVID-19. COVID Last year we, have, we had Ebola. Before many years ago we had SARS. Before we had AIDS, right? These are all diseases that we face as human beings, basically. So there is no guarantee there will be no other. There will be. So we need to be prepared for this. And the way to pre be prepared is to make risk assessment. So we need to link this risk assessment to a contingency planning. That is what is very that is very important. So we need to identify the resources. You know, we need to identify the key risks. We need to put together a contingency plan. What is going to be? If another disease comes up, what am I going to do? Am I, do I have my mask in place? Have I trained my employees? Am I going to work from home? Who's going to come to factory? Who's going to come to plant? Who's going to be off? Who's going to be actually on duty? So I need to plan this out right now before it happens. If it happens, I'll just press the button. I'll just call the contingency plan because assuming I train my employees and everything will be running smoothly. That's basically what I like to go with this. Uh, so employee training will be more and more important. And business trips will be highly scrutinized. We're going to have less and less business trips in coming, coming time, coming years. And remote, remote work will be the new normal. Not that we never work from home before. It is just that it's going to be the new normal. It's going to be, it's going to be, the, we're going to work more and more from home. Companies will encourage employees for them to work from home. What does it mean from the technology point of view? That means we need to have the technologies in place. Just like Navi mentioned earlier, we need to have our cloud technologies in place. We need to have our technologies, our cloud networks, we need to make sure they are safe and secure. And on top of it, we need to have our software products in the scope of, scope of digital transformation where I can keep my information on a repository and I can actually access that information from anywhere. I like to access my risk assessments, even if I'm on the road, even if I'm home, even if I'm out of the office. I like to be able to pull my contingency report, contingency plans, wherever I am. And I like to be able to train my employees wherever they are, whether they are at the plant, in the office, at home, I like to be able to train them. So this is the new normal. This is what is coming and not that what we'll be facing as, as, as businesses, basically. So this is, uh, this change everything. So until March, we were talking about uh, what is coming in terms of uh, digital transformation. But now we need to also talk about what, how the life will be after COVID-19 and how we can actually adopt that in the in the scope of uh, scope of digital transformation. So, what we have is a, a model called uh, we call the digital transformation uh, 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 model with the help of actually quality and management standards. So, um, uh, this is our actually approach to digital transformation. So, 
What do I mean by quality and management standards? There are many different standards in the marketplace. It depends on the industry that you are in. These are not, not these are not something new. They have been in the market for a long time. However, as business owners and as professionals, we can utilize these uh, these quality and management standards to adapt digital transformation. I'll give you some examples. If you are in aerospace aviation industry, you gotta be compliant with AS9100 or ISO 9001, for example. If you are in automotive industry, this industry has its own ISO, its own quality management standards called uh, IATF. 16949. If you are in healthcare, for example, uh, you are compliant with FDA, you are compliant with Euro European Medical Agency, for example, or local local agency in your region. Uh, if you are a manufacturer, you are compliant with ISO 9001, for example. If you are a technology company, you are compliant with ISO 27001 or, or, or SAC compliance, for example, another one. If you are a pharma company or if you are a medical device company, good manufacturing practices, GMP, as well as ISO 13485. So these are some of them that I put together. There are many, many of other uh, type of uh, quality and management standards available in the marketplace. So the question is this, how can I, or why should I utilize these quality and management standards, which has been around since 1980s, right? Nothing new. So why should I actually utilize these? Why should I benefit from these standards to adapt digital transformation? That's the key question that we need to be asking. So before we answer that, let me remind you the definition of digital transformation. Basically, we like to adapt our company's strategy as well as companies as well as companies' structures to capture opportunities enabled by the technology. That's what I like to do. So I like to have my strategy in place, I like to have my structures in place, and I like to have my culture in place, meaning culture is in the environment, basically. To Open, to be open for the change, to be open for the digital transformation, to be able to adapt technology, in short. So why do we need to comply with quality management standards to adapt digital transformation? Short answer is continuous improvement and customer satisfaction. Isn't it what we like to do as business owners and as uh, business professionals? Don't you like to uh, continuously improve your processes? Don't you like to do your job better and better? You know, you always look for a better way, right? To, make it better, to reduce costs, to be more efficient, to be more productive. Don't you like to actually increase your customer satisfaction? You like to, right? So uh, these two actually goals are common goals with any of these quality and management standards that I shared with you. Whether that's ISO 9001, whether that is SQF, whether that's BRC, whether that's GMP, they all have the commonalities, common goal. And that is having the continuous improvement in place in any company, and having policies and procedures in place to make sure I'm going to increase my customer satisfaction. If I increase my customer satisfaction, I can make more sale. That's where it's going, basically. This is the short answer. The long answer is basically, there are, I call it strong seven. So these are basically coming from ISO 9001. It has seven pillars, basically. I got to have leadership in my company. I got to have, uh, I got to have, I got to be in a position of, making decisions based on evidence, not by hearsay, not by I like to do it, based on you know uh, evidence, basically. I need to be able to observe, count, measure. I need to be customer focused. I need to be improving my processes. I need to make sure that I have engagement uh, in, my, uh, in my organization and as well as my, with my customers. I need, to be, I need to be trained to understand how the process is actually in the company that I am running. Maybe I'm in sales, maybe I'm in marketing. Maybe I'm in production. I like to be trained to follow that procedure, policy in place. And I like to, I need to be actually managing the relationship. These are the seven pillars of ISO 9001. So see, when you look at this, digital transformation, the, its scope and man, when it, where it likes to take you is actually same as any quality and management standard. So why don't we just utilize these quality and management standards available in the marketplace? You don't have to be certified ISO 9001 but you can be practicing ISO 9001, having policies and procedures in place, having training in place, having leadership in place, engagement in place to increase customer satisfaction and continuous improvement. So having said that, what is quality, right? We need to also talk about that. So basically quality needs to reflect the characteristics of the product. It needs to also reflect the characteristics of the environment that products is coming from, as well as uh, as well as the spirit of, of, of the teams that actually put it together. That's what it is. So it's a symbol, it stands for something. 
And why do you need to comply with quality management standards other than adapting digital transformation? Because customers are asking you to comply with various quality management standards. Okay. If you're not complying with ISO, some of the companies may not buy from you. If you're not complying with AS9100, and if you are even making a doorknob for an airplane, Boeing or Airbus will not buy from you. Uh, if you're not complying with DRC or SQF, most of the supermarkets uh, and uh, food chains will not buy from you. And your competitors, your competitors are comp complying with certain standards. They are complying with ISO, they are complying with um, uh, SQF, DRC, FDA. So if you don't comply, you lose basically because you cannot compete. Also, uh, you can improve your operations and you can adapt digital transformation, of course, in the, in the bottom of it. And you can position your company to grow. So what kind of challenges uh, we have been seeing in the marketplace? So we've been working with thousands of customers in many different regions, in many different industries. So we are very, very, very experienced in this digital transformation as well as helping companies utilizing quality management systems to adapt digital transformation. So what do we see? What do we observe? We observe that many of the companies, they have a hard time managing the paperwork in terms of policies, procedures, updates, and revisions. That's the difficulty that they have been having that we have seen. Also, it may be difficult to maintain the, uh, the system in place. When you are busy with your day-to-day uh, -day operations, it may be difficult to follow those uh, management standards sometimes. These, these are the difficulties. The good news is we are in digital age. And with the help of digital age and technology, speaking of digital transformation, then uh, it is much easier to manage any management, any quality standard right now. You can actually simplify the document management operations, your policies, procedures, SOPs, your forms. Now you can digitize it and you can actually manage them paperless with no need of paper, less than need of paper, no need for paper. All the updates can come automatically digitally. Audits are very important in any industry, finance, banking, manufacturing, service, retail, we're going to have audits, right? So uh, these audits can be run also digitally with no need of paper. And also, uh, it's easier to follow the uh, entire system, uh, management system as a whole. So speaking of the system, this is our framework that we put together at BIMSO International. And this framework is actually ready to take you to digital transformation. That's how you adapt. So it has three pillars, okay? There is assurance piece, there is control piece, and there is prediction piece. So when I say assurance, I'm talking about the quality management system that you have in your organization. That may be as typical as ISO 9001. That may be if you are in food industry, that may be SQF, you are in technology industry, that may, that may be SAC compliance. If you are in aerospace, that may be IAS 9100. If you are a, if you are a medical device or healthcare company, that may be ISO 13485 or, or good manufacturing practices or FDA perhaps. Or there may be other standards that you are in based on your studs, uh, based on your industry. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to be certified to follow these standards. You can actually practice it. Okay. So even if you practice it, that means that means you have an assurance system in place. That's the entire management system that you have in your company. That is basically the backbone, if you ask me. So based on this backbone, based on this assurance system, you're going to have the controls in place, okay? Call it quality control, call it management control, okay? And you can also do it with, your, with audits, basically, or internally. So with these control points, and control points are basically dictated by quality assurance, the assurance piece, the system that you have in place, you're going to have controls. You're going to have controls when you receive any raw material. You're going to have controls when you have any operations in finance. You need to have control points in purchasing, in accounting, for example. Uh, in production, you need to have uh, also control. So that is the second piece in our in our framework. And the third piece is uh, is predict prediction basically. That's how we can we can be proactive, right? So we need to know what is coming. So this piece is actually basically hitting IoT technology. So if I have a sensor in your office right now, even if you are in Malaysia, I can actually remotely monitor the temperature in your office, in your home. Uh, I can actually remotely monitor the noise levels, the light levels uh, uh, of your office, for example. Even if I'm in New York right now, we can put the sensor on there. All we need to do is just doing the integration or just turn this on. I can remotely monitor it, for example. So that is actually a great advantage. Um, so 
the, these three piece basically when you put them together and when you utilize them that is basically the the path to digital transformation in a in a real sense and as beam international based on these uh, they based on this framework uh, our products are ready to help companies adapt digital transformation uh, and then we'll talk more about our products in a minute so when we say assurance we address assurance with our qdms product with our risk audit quality and compliance management software. That's the assurance piece. That's your backbone. That's where you put the systems in place as managers, as business owners, as business professionals. We have EBA, that's our enterprise level electronic business automation platform that is ready to address any activities that you like to have within the control functionalities. Okay, and we'll talk about it in a minute too. And we have Beam as our enterprise asset and maintenance management system. It is ready to help you manage your uh, predictive operations remote monitoring your machinery equipment your office uh, your warehouse your distribution center your facility you don't have to have machinery you can have also facilities buildings properties right you can also manage those with that so having said that we have this product line to help companies adopt digital transformation and today we'll be focusing on two of them uh, just to make it easy for you because uh, it may take too much time uh, so uh, and as i said this is a series of webinars and this is the first series so today we just focus on two of them in coming webinars we'll talk more of our products and more of uh, examples of digital transformation in different industries so uh, let's talk about EBA and QDMS as I mentioned earlier EBA is our electronic business automation platform and uh, with the help of EBA you can uh, manage your workflows documents and other activities that I'll give you more information in a minute uh, QDMS is our quality risk audit and compliance management system. So with the help of QDMS, you can comply with any quality and management standard in the world. Paperless. Everything is digital. It's beautiful. So it makes things easier. And EBA and QDMS, as I mentioned earlier, they are ready to work together. They can also work integrated way together. They can also work independently. So uh, when you also look at them in the scope of digital transformation, our products QDMS and EBA, they are ready to work with other technologies, right? Speaking of IoT devices, smart sensors, temperature, vibration, uh, monitoring the uh, health of your machinery, equipment. So I can monitor all these with the help of these uh, these uh, these smart sensors, and with the help of integration that I have available, I can actually link our uh, products to uh, these technologies easily. And so you can automate processes. You know, you don't have to check the devices. The device can be checked by our products automatically and you can take the actions automatically you know that's automation simple you don't have to make the phone call you don't have to call you don't have to ask me you don't have to ask him you don't have to send email to figure out system figures out for you because that's the integrated system same thing with manufacturing execution systems or crms for example or as typical as erp systems everyone has some sort of an accounting software or, or more advanced erp system for example so they can all be working together integrated way and this is actually the feature in terms of digital transformation, running all these systems together, integrated at your organization. That makes things much, much easier for everybody. And that's what, for us, that's what, the, that's what adopting digital transformation is in modern life. Uh, so let's talk about EBA a little bit further right now. So EBA is our enterprise level electronic business automation platform. And uh, EBA has four modules. All of our products are them. Uh, it has four modules. One is called workflow module. It helps companies manage their uh, business processes. So you can automate this true automation piece, true automation technology. And workflow engine is supported by documents and records management module, caption module, and also a dashboard module. That is another module that we have. So let's talk a little bit further about it. So when we say workflow engine, any business process that you have, that may be um, uh, purchasing management, that may be training management, that may be contract management, that may be quality control management, that may be uh, change management, or that may be product life cycle management, as sophisticated as, for example, if you are managing your product life cycle. You can manage all these with the help of EBA digitally. I put a schematic of a workflow, for example. Typically, all of our business processes, they have, they have steps, right? Let's say I'm working for you, and I like to have a business uh, trip but I need to have approval from my manager. So if I have no technological uh, system in place, I'm supposed to fill up a form and I need to take that form to my manager to, to get it signed. 
Imagine doing this electronically with no need of paper, and these forms are filled on EBA, and it goes to the manager for approval digitally. And I know I send it to him, I send it to her for approval. You know, typically if you put a piece of paper on a table on a desk, you may lose it, right? But on EBA there is no such thing. I know when I send it to you, I know how long it's been waiting on your desk for approval. I know uh, who's been approved so far, and I, I can put all these different criteria to automate that business process. So eBay is the way to actually automate any business process any, in any company. That's a, that's a very, very uh, modern system. So on the screen, you can see some of the example business processes. There are many, of course, I just put together some of them, expense management, change management, purchasing management, HR onboarding, offboarding, things like that, 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 that you, can, you can manage. And with the help of a workflow engine, we can actually uh, configure the system based on your current uh, hierarchy. We have document management and records management module. So with the help of this module, you can manage all your documents. So the definition of our documents is that may be your PDF file, that may be your Word file, that may be your, your MP4 file, right, video file, that may be your JPEG file, your, your, your images, for example. So document is a little broad concept if you think about it. So you can manage all these documents uh, on eBus repository. Uh, it is secure. Uh, it is also uh, permission based. Not everyone can see everything in our software products. Same thing for, for EBA. So you can give me certain permissions. I can only see certain documents, certain folders. That's it. And you can update your documents with check in and check out functionality. We can manage the versions. Also, with the help of advanced search capabilities, you can actually make a search in the in the system. When I say search, I'm talking about not only the name of the file. The content of the document. I can make a search of, let's say, Bimser in my uh, in my database they, through EBA. I can pull all the documents have that Bimser International word in it, for example. That's a, that's a powerful powerful search search capability. Uh, third module is called Capture. With the help of Capture, I am able to read all the characters on your documents. Okay. And when I read this, I can capture it in any language. Could be Malay language, could be English, could be any language. Basically, you name it. Uh, I I can pick it up. I can put it in a form, and I can pro I can start a process. For example, a, an example may be accounts receivable automation, accounts payable automation. Let's say you keep receiving invoices from your customers, and you need to handle them by hand, and it takes too long for you. Uh, it, it's also open for human error. With the help of uh, OCR capture module. Uh, our systems can read, receive your vendors' in, uh, invoices automatically, read the uh, numbers, and I can also match uh, these invoices with your purchase order. So we can make sure you are receiving what you order. Uh, it's in the warehouse, and the numbers and the prices and units actually they match. So this is basically a very important piece to automate, uh, and this is the way to go. And finally, we have a dashboard module to help managers have actually uh, visual visual reports these reports may be as in bar chart pie chart or different visual uh, forms like such as maps for example and other visual tools that you you like to have that's basically there is no limit that sky is the limit basically however you like we put this together for you to manage your managerial kpis uh, a short use case in terms of uh, uh, eba and how actually we can help some companies adopt digital transformation, for example. So one of the examples will be uh, AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca is a pharmaceutical company. It's a global company. They have naturally more than 1,000 employees, and they have multiple locations, and they are one of our customers. One of their compliance requirements actually is uh, ISO, uh, support, supported by FDA and EMA requirements. And they had hard time managing their uh, business processes. Some of them was about uh, HR. Some of them was about, about, about purchasing. So they were managing these uh, operations partially paper on paper and partially on Excel sheets. So it was very difficult for them to get uh, reports uh, by using uh, paper-based and Excel-based uh, tools. And it, it was also difficult for them to have continuous improvement. So we deployed EBA at uh, AstraZeneca, at pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical manufacturer. And um, with the help of that, they digitize all their operations. They get rid of paper. No more paper anymore in the organization. It's a paperless environment. Not only you save uh, money by reducing the cost of paper purchasing, you are also saving space because you don't need to have archive anymore. Because that's 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 how the paper is. 
you print it, you file it, and then you archive it. So, and then you need to go find it in that archive. It's very, very difficult and it's very expensive, by the way. So with the help of that, AstraZeneca actually digitized those uh, those activities. Um, I just summarized what we did for them. We have more detailed information on our on our website about these, these use cases, but I just want to give you a, an idea how we have been helping these reputable companies. Uh, another one, for example, United Nations. United Nations is also one of our customers, and they are using eBus document management and records management module. Uh, it, as you know, that's a very reputable organization based in New York. And one of the things that they wanted to do was uh, managing the documentation of APUGs. Okay, and they didn't have the infrastructure for it, especially uh, all these tragic events starting in Syria and uh, having the need of managing the documentation of refugees became a real, became very challenging for United United Nations. So we deployed EBA for them, and with the help of EBA and EBA's document and records management module, they started to manage refugees' applications, their documentation in a digital environment, and with the powerful search capabilities of EBA. Not only they can get the applications of, uh, from refugees, they can also actually pull uh, information, uh, data whenever they like to by utilizing the search capabilities of EBA. Um, I like to also talk about QDMS a little bit, and then I'll hand it over to Sam, uh, my colleague from our engineering team, so he will also show you some examples live in our in our demo environment. So uh, in short, QDMS is our call to risk and audit management and compliance management system. It helps companies manage many different uh, quality standards, there is no limit. ISO 9001 could be SQF, PRC, FDA, GMP, you name it. Uh, just like EBA, that is a web-based architecture, meaning uh, once we deployed EBA as well as QDMS, for example, you can access, uh, access the systems anywhere you are. You don't have to be in the office. All you need is internet and, a, uh, and, a, uh, uh, and an internet uh, browser. Could be Internet Explorer, could be Google Chrome, Firefox, you name it. There is no restriction. And then wherever you are, just like connecting a website, you can connect your system. QDMS, EBA, they all have the same modern technologies. Uh, just like EBA, um, QDMS has also a uh, user-friendly environment. And with the help of these two systems, not only you can adapt digital transformation and you can enjoy the benefits of technology, you can also create your corporate memory. No more paper-based archives, no more uh, human dependent operations. Once you deploy these systems, no matter who is running your operation, John, Simit, many, it doesn't matter. Your policies and procedures in place. Whoever takes that position can continue the job just like started yesterday. So uh, that's a great advantage to have that corporate memory. Everything is written, uh, searchable, secure, and permission-based, basically. Um, and these systems, uh, same also with QDMS, uh, that works on cloud as well as on-premise servers. And we have a modular structure. Uh, I just talked about eBus uh, modules for modules, workflow, document management, capture and dashboard. Uh, QDMS is also modular for cloud management and compliance management to adapt digital transformation. Uh, QDMS has more than 30, 30 different modules. With the help of these modules, you can pick and choose any, any of them that you like. You don't have to. There is no, uh, you know, obligations to, to take, you know, a certain number. Uh, with the help of these modules, you can run your operations digitally. You can adapt digital transformation. Also, you can comply with many different standards: ISO, SQF, BRC, FDA, SOC, uh, and many other standards. Basic. There is no, there is no restriction. And if you notice, we also have IT, uh, health and safety, as well as process risk management modules available. So. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the life after COVID-19 will dictate risk management, risk assessment, and will dictate contingency plans. That means, based on my risk assessment, I have to have my contingency plans, meaning I need to have my plan B. If this happens, what am I gonna do? If that happens, what am I gonna do? If, if there is typhoon, how am I gonna act? What are my plans in place? That's, what, that's my plan B. If, uh, God forbid, another disease happens, you know, how am I going to uh, protect my employees? How am I going to protect my customers? How am I going to operate? How am I going to work from office? Am I going to work from home? Or uh, what's going to be the setup? So this risk assessment is critical. So we have modules for it as well. Uh, also, I need to train my employees. Now I have my risk assessment in place. I know what may happen and I know what 
how I'm going to uh, actually address this risk if that actually takes place. Now I need to train my employees. Another disease happens. How am I going to act? How am I going to actually operate my business? So I need to train my employees accordingly. So we have training module for it. And followed by uh, control document management for policies, procedures, and SOPs, also customer complaints and other details that's available. Let's keep it in mind. Same thing with COVID-19, after COVID-19, and same thing with digital transformation. Getting the feedback is critical. We need to get feedback for continuous improvement. So how do I get feedback? I can ask you for your feedback about my product. Uh, I can make a survey. Uh, you know, I can actually, you know, do, I can make observation uh, and I can also make audits, for example, to get some feedback to see the current situation. How am I doing? So based on that, I can take corrective action for continuous improvement. Continuous improvement always brings co customer satisfaction and customer satisfaction means more sales and more sales opportunities. That's, that's what it means. So this digital transformation adaptation and complying with certain management and quality standards are actually parallel. They work together. That is our model. That's our actual way to adapt digital transformation. So uh, now I'd like to hand it over to Sam. Sam is our software engineer in our engineering team. And Sam actually put together our uh, demo environment and he'll show you our EBA, Electronic Business Automation Platform. Uh, you can, and you can see some examples. Uh, in, in, in live live demo environment. Also, just like Navi mentioned earlier, after this brief demonstration, we're gonna keep it very high level. And if you need, of course, if you have any questions or if you like to schedule any meeting, uh, we can help you with that as well. Um, and after this demonstration, we have question and answer Q&A session that we can address your questions. Sam, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, floor is yours, Sam. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you for your presentation and introduction. And I just want to make sure if you can see my screen. Yes. Which is EBA. Nice. Thank you. So thank you for joining this webinar. This is Sam at Bimser International. So um, what you can see is uh, on your screen is the home page of EBA, our enterprise business automation platform, which helped you to keep your operation or keep your company running under or after COVID-19, under the situation like this that we are encountering. The reason why I'm saying this is because you can find all your business, uh, or uh, I would say uh, your digital, digitized uh, business process for example, like the request and the task on this home screen, which you can click on it and get a quick connection to proceed this kind of request and task. Okay, so you don't need, uh, you don't have to check uh, back and forth your email and also sign it on a physical paper. And instead you can do it on EBA with the digitized uh, business process. So, these are some examples that we have uh, on EBA on our demo environment. So uh, you can see on this application list, we have different solutions, for example, like uh, for HR purposes, for QC quality control purposes, our project manager, and also uh, for food industry. So you can see the flexibility and the capability of EBA. We can apply our, uh, this platform and digitize your business process in different uh, industry. And let me uh, put one of the example, like uh, the expense declara declaration. So this is the form, we call it on EVA, that we digitize on our, per our platform. So uh, and you can enter your name and also your email address or put it automatically by, the, uh, by, our, soft, uh, by our system. And you can add the information to your table. For example, like uh, expense type, which you can choose from a drop-down list. The expense amount, for example, like $1,000. And the description. Also, 
you can attach any document to this solution and to our system as well. So you can browse your local drive and upload your document right here. Okay. And after filling the form that we have for this uh, expense claim form, then we can send it to the uh, workflow that we have defined. So different solutions have different workflow that we can configure. Like for this one, we can send it to the manager and if it's more than 500 or $500, we send it to the president. Otherwise, it's go to the finance department directly. So this workflow, um, you can always upload or update this workflow anytime if needed. Okay. And on our left, come back to the main menu of our modules since I'm logging in as an admin, so I have a full control of my platform. So let us come to document management module. As Kevin mentioned, so we can upload our document to our library folder. So let's say I have this library named as files. And you can find all the subfolders sitting under this uh, library. Okay. And you can upload a uh, different document type, for example, like uh, invoice, contract, training material, since EBA support uh, different file format, for example, like uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint or image like a JPEG, PNG, and also a video, audio, and cat, a cat file. Okay, so these are the documents that I have in this folder, like my test folder. And you can click on it, and after deploying EVA on your cloud server or on premise server, you don't need any other software to read the content of your document. Your document will be shown in the built-in browser of EBA so that you can uh, read your document and also you can make your note to your document and um, the user will find this note every single time they read this document or they open this document. Okay, and you can see we can, um, the user can download or share this document via email as well. And in our document management module, we can manage the permission since all um, in this system or in this platform, all the author authorization of role base, it depends on your um, your position, profession, department, or group. And you can manage it right here in this module and limit the activities that of the users, like uh, download the document, printing it, and also share it with email or share with uh, or as an external link. So we can manage here and keep your document insecure. Furthermore, all the activities that the user carry out will be recorded in a log of EBA. And you can find those uh, from this history. And it will show you the action and the username and also the date and time right here. And we also call it like the audit trail. And this come to the end of my demonstration. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Let me open up the screen for questions right now. Yes, there are some uh, questions coming up in the chat box. Also, I also received some questions actually before the uh, before the meeting starts. I had some 
uh, some emails before, so we can also address those definitely. Um, and again, uh, what we do is uh, we keep our contact information on the screen. You can contact with Navi, you can contact with us. We are partners, we work very close together. And, uh, you know, uh, after this demonstration, after this actually webinar session, uh, if you'd like to continue this conversation, if you'd like to schedule a demo meeting, you can just, you know, contact us or con contact Navi and then uh, we'll, you know, schedule time with you and we can talk more in detail uh, about these subjects, especially digital transformation and our, our products. So, um, in terms of um, uh, the question that we got, for example, I'll address some of them. For example, security measures uh, of our system regarding uh, EBAR uh, is, uh, these are uh, permission-based systems. So every single user can see certain parts of the system based on your permissions, right? You set the system, system permissions, that's one thing. Uh, another one is we have encryption available in EBAR, meaning once you set the encryption, other than you, no one else can actually read the, read the documentation and data in the system. That is actually a very important security security feature. Uh, every single user has unique username and password, so that also helps you secure the uh, system. If you don't use the system uh, for about 30 seconds, it, it automat automatically uh, logs out. So uh, you cannot just you know leave your computer open and the system just hangs there. No. If you don't use it, it'll basically automatically log out. Also, uh, that's a secure system. Just like Sam mentioned earlier, we have locks available, meaning I know, you know, who basically connects the system. When you actually um, log in the system, what do you do in the system? What do you try to change? You can actually, uh, we actually lock everything. And also, uh, our system is also FDA uh, CFR Part 11 compliant. So it has these uh, security features in place, such as you cannot change if you, if you activate these features, you cannot change certain data coming from PEST without authorization. No, so what it means is not everyone, any user in your organization can just jump, just jump into the system and then you know change here and there, no. If you don't have the permission, if you don't have the authorization, you cannot do anything in the system. You can only read, for example. So these are some of the security features that I can, I can mention. Another question is about uh, digital signing, right? Electronic signature, that's I think what you are referring to. Uh, so, if that is the case, uh, we have uh, integration capabilities with other uh, systems for uh, digital signature, electronic signature. One of them is DocuSign, for example, which is very, very common. If you are using another systems, we can integrate and you can also activate it as well. Um, so if it is in cloud environment, uh, again, it should, this, the, the, uh, the security features actually I just mentioned doesn't really matter if that's, that's on cloud or on-premise server, doesn't matter. In addition to those, you can also use a load balancer. Some of our customers, they are using EBA and same thing with QDMS with two, three different servers at the same time uh, to increase the uh, efficiency, to increase the performance, also for security features. At the same time, you can use two, three different servers uh, that may be in different locations because it doesn't really matter where your server is, it's in cloud or, or, or on-premise server, the system is web-based, you know, I can deploy it in Malaysia, I can use it in New York, I deploy it here, you can use it there. So the security features are the same for cloud as well as same for uh, same for on-premise server. Um, another one, another question is, uh, oh, great question, by the way, I appreciate it, thank you so much. Uh, some say requires the current account for prayer, how do you handle this kind of requirements? Okay, so here is how it is, um, you're right, so, uh, some of the uh, regulations require a certain time period for you to read the documents, right? So for you to keep the documents. So we have retention capabilities on EBA. It is in document management part. So what happens is, uh, let's say certain documents that you need to keep it for 10 years, for example. So FDA has certain requirements like that or other uh, local uh, you know, states, that kind of regulations also in the United States, so we are very used to it. Um, so in the retention part, you basically dictate the system how long you want to keep that document uh, the data on your systems, how many more years, how many more months, okay? And then after that time, if the, the time comes, it expires, then it actually disposes the, 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 the data, actually, that deletes from the system, that's what happens. So uh, that kind of um, uh, requirements in terms of uh, the time period that you need to keep the document can be managed on eBay pretty easily. Uh, in terms of storage uh, and uh, that's basically up to you. 
or up to Navi, I have to say, because what we do is we basically provide the software. We don't provide the infrastructure. So you basically talk to Navi, you talk to a systemizer, right? They provide you the cloud environment or uh, private uh, cloud. And that's where we actually uh, uh, implement our systems. So as long as we have space, you can keep the data of yours and you own the data. We just deploy the uh, software and we support you 24 seven. 100% support, that's, that's what we provide uh, simply. Uh, another question that I got actually was about um, mobile uh, devices. So uh, are you able to use uh, mobile devices uh, for EBA as well as for QDMS? Yes, we have a native mobile application, both for EBA and QDMS. So they work on uh, Android uh, system. Android operating system as well as iOS operating system for uh, as for um, iPhones, right? So you can uh, just download it from your uh, from your store uh, from uh, Play Store or iOS uh, App Store, and then you basically configure it. And again, the security is very important for us. So with your username and password, you are able to uh, connect the system. Some of our customers they have secure environment. They don't want. Uh, they have restricted networks, uh, network capabilities. They restricted on purpose for security purposes. So if, if that's the case, you can only access it with a, with a VPN perhaps. But uh, other than that, it's up to your, your network. Uh, normal conditions, you can access the uh, mobile application anywhere you are with your, with your smart device. Um, there are other questions that I see in the chat box. I'm also going to be addressing other questions because I received some emails, so I, I like to address them as well. So one of them is about uh, Excel is being loaded into EBA. Then even the file will still be EXA format or is something like a PDF format. So it'll be stored as an Excel. It'll be short as a PDF, for example, for you to read. Um, if that's a video file, that's going to be the video file you'll watch, for example. So as I mentioned earlier, yeah, EBAS document, the document definition is kind of broad. When I say document, that's not only Word files or PDF files. It also includes uh, video files, Excel sheets, uh, JPEG files, CAD files even. If you have blueprints, for example, you can upload uh, and you can view it with an EBA. Uh, we have almost unlimited type of uh, viewer available in, in EBA. So you don't have to download anything. You can just watch and read within the system, which is a great, great opportunity for you to, you know, uh, utilize. Uh, if the Excel sheet 32 megabyte after we upload it in EBA, it will remain in 32 megabyte or we EBA compress. So we have compress function available in EBA. If you have large files, you can compress it. Other than that, it's on your database basically. But there is compression uh, option is available. That's why my answer is yes. In addition to a description needed to be typed in to be something like a tag to the yes, of course. So there is a when you are actually uploading a document uh, in EBA, you, you need to define your document, you know, who owns the document, what's the name of it, uh, what are certain texts, certain uh, certain keywords that you like to actually emphasize. So all these uh, data is actually um, defined by you, yourself, uh, when you're uploading documents. So that's also an important piece of information, actually. Um, so when you are going into the audit, I will actually refer you to the uh, uh, refer you to the QDMS. So when you say when you are going too much in the audit part in terms of compliance, QDMS has more uh, more audit friendly uh, features in terms of hard copy versus uh, soft copy. Uh, QDMS has more capabilities uh, for compliance purposes. Um, uh, but if you like to use EBA in that sense as well, that's also available uh, for audit. Again, that's all permission based and that's available and we can show you in another session. Um, is there an integration with SAP? Yes. So first of all, I actually mentioned during my presentation, as BIM3 International, we are a certified SAP vendor, meaning any of our products, including EBA, is ready to integrate with any SAP product. Okay. So what we do is we work with your SAP uh, service provider. You know, together we basically integrate your system. Uh, we already have some. Uh, we are, we have done many different integrations to different SAP products. SAP has different ERP systems. Doesn't really matter. With the web service APIs, uh, we can integrate, and the, these two systems can have the uh, integration basically. Um, so uh, the integration is if you need a button on the SAP side to run a for example, an integration or to bring the document that is on the SAP side. But typically what we do is uh, the idea is to have the data flowing between two systems. So you won't have to have any 
um, uh, you don't have to have uh, double entry that's the, ent that's the idea but there are different ways of integrating it that maybe just exchanging the data if you need a button to just you know uh, retrieve the document that's also possible either way works because uh, there are different ways of integrations from technical point of view in terms of integration we have no limits as long as unless the system that you are using is from 1980s <laughs> unless that's really old we can integrate with any system and sap is a very modern system as we know it uh, just like our system so we can do many different integrations uh, but let's just keep it in mind though uh, our systems are independent we didn't write any of our systems to run any erp system we integrate from outside that's our advantage that's our flexibility basically and sap is one of them same with microsoft and and other other ERP systems and uh, NES systems available. Um, another question that I got is actually uh, about the uh, verticals. You know, do you have any uh, certain verticals, certain industry that you are specialized in? So, um, if you if you saw our reference list, uh, we have actually a mix of uh, references. You know, uh, so we work with manufacturers, we work with banks, we work with service providers, we work with uh, finance organizations. We work with pharma, food industry, restaurants. We work with automotive industry, aerospace, uh, oil and gas, right? Energy is one of them. Uh, retail is another industry that we are very, very close. Uh, public sector is another of them. We work with many different government institutions, organizations in different uh, parts of the world. Uh, we are working with also defense, for example, another industry that we are very active uh, in. Um, banks, uh, service providers, uh, property management organizations, hospitality, right, hotels, resorts, for example, uh, manufacturing organizations, uh, confectionery uh, manufacturers, snack food manufacturers. So the bottom line is we are vertical free, really. Our products are vertical free. What we do is we rapidly deploy them and we configure them based on your company's hierarchy and, and priority. That is our advantage. We are vertical free. We can deploy anywhere. And we have massive experience, massive. I mean, we've been around since 1990. We have we have seen it all, and we are still learning, by the way. That's how we became successful. We learn a lot from our customers, but we have a lot of uh, experience. So we allow to put this experience to work for your organization with, uh, with Systemizer in Malaysia. Uh, let me see if there is any other questions. And again, please, you see my email address on the screen. You know Navi, he is also online, uh, our friend uh, from Systemizer. We work together. So you please contact us, let's schedule time, we can talk more in detail, and we can also show you also QDMS uh, for the uh, for the compliance and audit as well for ISO, for SPF, PRC, and other standards. Um, is there any other question around? Uh, by the way, you ask great questions, I have to say. Thank you so much, my much appreciated. That means uh, you're really interested, you have our Yes, Navi also put this uh, uh, email address in the in the chat box. Please connect uh, with uh, connect uh, Navi uh, if you have any questions. If you'd like to schedule a demo, for example, to talk more in detail, and we'll be happy to help you. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions available? Uh, one of the questions actually that I got uh, earlier was um, about the um, the dur duration of a product, uh, this, a project, for example. Typically, what is the duration of the of the project? Uh, it depends on the, of course, detail of the project, right? But typically, our projects are between one to three months, basically. You know, we deploy it, we configure it for you, and then we train you. And that, that takes typically one to three months. Depends on your availability for um, training. Depends on your uh, data readiness. So if you have your data ready, we can deploy it much quicker, for example. So these are the uh, differences. Um, any other questions? Okay, great. These are two person either that was something that we Yes. So the question is, is there an approval process available in EBA to load certain documents in? Uh, so you need to get the approval first, right, from your superiors, and then you can put it in the system. That is the question if that is available. Uh, so my answer is yes. Uh, we have a powerful workflow engine underneath EBA. 
So with the help of workflow engine, you can run your approval process. So let's say I have a document, let's say I have a contract, right? And let's say you're in a legal department. Uh, and for me to have this contract approved, I need to go through this uh, contract with our legal department, with our lawyers, so that it can be official. Because I'm buying something and I have a vendor contract. So I upload the document in EBA and it goes to uh, you as our legal department, first of all. So you need to review it, you need to read it, and you can put your comments, you can ask for change, for example, within that workflow, within that approval process, digitally, again, no paper. And uh, once legal department approves my contract that I made with a, with, a, with a vendor for our company, for example, then it goes to uh, our document management system, it becomes official for later use. So my answer is yes, you have an approval process available in EBA, and we basically configure the approval process based on your company's hierarchy. You may have a supervisor manager, you may have a uh, you may have manager director, or you may have a criteria. Let's say you have a process. If it is less than five hundred dollars, for example, account manager can approve it. If it is more than five hundred dollars, let's say, let's say you need two managers approval. It needs to approval of the let's say account manager and also finance manager. So you need to have two approvals. Uh, so we have a powerful workflow engine, very, very powerful. It's really enterprise level, SAP level, easily, uh, but uh, you know, very, very user friendly. It's not really complicated. It's actually low code environment. Uh, EBA. Most of these approval processes we design it with drag and drop, almost no coding needed. So we are really, really proud of it, and that approval process is something that uh, we, we we done a lot in different companies. Great, I think we address all the questions. Just like uh, Navi mentioned, uh, you see Navi's uh, email address in the chat box. So if you like to schedule any uh, uh, meeting with us to talk more detail about your company, about your digital transformation vision and your roadmap and how we can actually cooperate together, uh, we are looking forward to that conversation, definitely. Uh, Navi, would you like to take it from here? Look yep, sure. Address all, the, all the questions. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I think to the one that asked us uh, on the chat room, uh, I will officially send a uh, copy paste back your questions and I'll answer via email. Sure. To have a, a, a copy for, for, for you to refer to. Okay, definitely. That, that's All a right. good idea. Yes, absolutely. Sounds great. Thank you. Well, uh, okay. Uh, so, any of you have any more further questions? Uh, or if you want to set up a, a specific discussion, uh, personally for your company, uh, do let us know. Uh, we will be more than happy to, to organize it for you. Uh, All right. Navi, I would like to thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you for organizing the All right. uh, webinar. Thank you and thank you, Patrick. I also like to thank our thank attendees. So Great questions. Uh, I hope they like our, uh, our presentation and demonstration. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the first webinar of the series. So I am looking forward to organizing uh, next uh, webinars with you. Thank all you right. Much. Thank you so much uh, to all the attended. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye now. Have a nice Thank day. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Um, Nawi, thanks a lot. All right. We'll, we'll see you in part two. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stay safe. Thank you, gentlemen. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you. Bye now. Goodbye.